Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome to Going In Raw Count Out, the show here at youtube.com forward slash Steve Larson, where we count things down in the world of wrestling and oh boy we got a humdinger for you today in honor of the reunification of the shield one of the most dominant factions in the history of the modern day wwe yeah uh we're gonna count down the top 10 wrestling factions of all time uh and of course you can find us at pro wrestling tease why did i just say pro wrestling tease i'm gonna say i was gonna segue very gracefully into saying, if you want to support Going In Raw, you can go to Patreon, Patreon. There is nothing com. graceful about it. There's nothing graceful nothing. about that. We are on the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Steven Larson. If you want to support the show, and we got a bunch of reward tiers you can check out. Also at Pro Wrestling Tees at ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash Going In Raw. This shirt is for patrons only. At the $50 mark, you put in 50 bucks, we'll get you this shirt, a bunch of other crap. And then you can get off the $50 train if you, you want. You only have to give us $150 bill to get that shirt. Yeah. You can drop back down to a dollar. It's a quality shirt. You could just stop after one month and yeah. still get that shirt. Yeah. What are we talking about today? Oh, you said that already. Factions. Factions. Bull. Well, hold on. Club. We're not there yet. Save that for that entry. All right. Fine. Let's get into it then. Number 10. 10. Chaos. Yeah, we're doing factions from New Japan as of well. Of course we are. Because we love us some New Japan. We do. Chaos started in 2009 when uh, two of our favorite wrestlers, Shinsuke Nakamura and Yano... Uh, turned their backs on Maccabi, I believe, and formed Chaos. Yeah. Heel faction. Yeah. Um, uh, and since then, they've been one of the most decorated factions in the history of New Japan. Of course, Nakamura is a multiple-time IWGP uh, champion, um, both heavyweight and intercontinental. Mm -hmm. um, the current IWGP heavyweight champion is Kazuchika Okada, yeah, even, leader of Chaos. Even when Nakamura... That was strange. That was strange. There's like, like a tremor. Alien invasion type thing happening? I know. There's like a, a, a bass, a really bassy tremor just shook your house. Yeah. Strange. Um, anyways, as I was saying before I was interrupted by Martians, um, Shinsuke Nakamura, when he got poached by the WWE, uh, you figure, hey, you know, the leader of chaos, maybe he's... No. Kazuchika Okada stepped in as leader of chaos, and uh, he's taken it to new levels. It's weird that it was uh, Nakamura and Yano. So, like... We're still learning about our New Japan stuff. Yeah. So we're just like, you know, reading up on it. And uh, Yano was one of the founding members of Chaos. And he's been the faction the entire time. That's so weird. The last eight years. Because I just figured like, oh, he's like a tangential member. But no, he was the He's man. a very important piece of New Japan. I know. Very important. Know. Um, you know, like, uh, for example, Will Ospreay, the current uh, junior heavyweight champion, member of Chaos. Mm -hmm. Rapongi 3K, the current uh, junior heavyweight tag champion, members of Chaos. Mm -hmm. um, who are the tag champs now? Oh, Killer Elite They're Squad. They're Suzuki. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, Rapongi Vice, former mm -hmm. junior heavyweight champions, tag team champions, Chaos. Yeah. Um, Yano and Ishii, yeah. former IWGP heavyweight tag team champions, Chaos. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're... Uh, an incredibly decorated uh, faction. Well, here's the thing about New Japan that I've learned. Factions are everything. Everybody's in a faction. If you're not in a faction, you're a big fat loser. Um, is Kushida in a faction? Is he Taguchi Japan? I think he's just on his own. So factions aren't everything. Shibata was never in a faction. Oh, or he wasn't until he had to retire. Yeah, he also isn't champion, and then he had to retire because he hurt his brain. And Kushida isn't champion now, is he? No, he's not. It's Will Ospreay as but the junior still, heavyweight he's champion. he's still the ace of the junior division. Well, just wait till Ospreay has a couple matches and he'll be ace too. Oh, it takes more than just a couple matches to be ace, Steve. You become an ace by having an illustrious career. <laughs> Ospreay Which, hasn't had an illustrious career? Well, not compared in New Japan, not compared to Kushida. And now with the rumors of Ricochet are going to be leaving, Ricochet is going to be leaving to Gucci Japan. Yeah. Then, you know, that faction is down one member. Chaos, out of all the factions, Bullet Club included... Chaos is right now, I think. Top faction in New Japan? In top terms faction, of dominance? Top faction in New Japan. In terms of kayfabe dominance. Like you said, look. Like you said earlier, Rapongi Vice, they lose their junior uh, straps. But Beretta, he's trying to he's be heavyweight a, He's now. heavyweight now. And then what do they do? They reload with Rapongi 3K. Yeah. Bring in Yo and Sho. Yeah. And bang. 
They get they those win. belts back right away. Exactly. So they've got all the belts. Who's the IC champion right now? Uh, Is it still Tanahashi? Tanahashi? He's to Gucci Japan. Who's he fighting? Who's gonna, he's going to lose that title to. I don't know. I thought he was going to lose it to Sabre. That didn't happen. Yeah, no, we both thought that one. Yeah, that didn't happen at all, did it? Let's review some of these some of these subgroup names. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to go down. We have on Wikipedia here, we have some subgroup chaos names that we love. One of the so the the team the tag team in 2012 of Okada and Yoshihashi of all people, Chaos Ride the Lightning. That's good. What a great name. That's a Metallica album. I well, like Ride this. the Lightning is Chaos Invincible. No, Chaos Top Team is the best. Yeah, that's a great name. And that was Nakamura and Yano. I kind of like No Remorse Core. Yeah, that's not bad. It's a really bad uh, 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 rhyme there. What about Complete Players? Forever Hooligans. Yeah, I like complete pay, uh, players. No limit. That was uh, Tetsuya Naito mm-hmm. and the Tokyo Pimp. There you go. Well, you t- yeah, they were in they were in TNA. I don't know if yeah. that was exclusively exclusively just a TNA thing that well, they did. Well, it says here in New Japan. Oh, it does. Okay. It doesn't even mention TNA. Yeah, see, uh, Wikipedia might have it wrong here. Anyways, chaos definitely number ten, but they're not the highest faction. Well, there we didn't go over our criteria. Our criteria for any of these best lists. Are threefold. One, okay. being good. Yeah. I mean, championship gold. No, that's kayfabe. Being good is actually just being good at your job. Oh, being good. Like okay. in ring performance, okay. promo ability, yeah. so on. Yeah. Two, impact. Mm. Uh, what kind of impact have you had on in the industry and mainstream? Championship. Three, gold. kayfabe. Oh, kayfabe. One lo- win loss record, championships. We just say kayfabe. Uh, yeah, yeah, kayfabe. I know. That's we, our we criteria. Don't say, we don't say storyline success. We just say kayfabe. Kayfabe. All right, number nine. Nine. The fabulous Freebirds. Um, they are. Uh, I mean, they have a rule named after them. That's Freebird, making an that's impact. That's a Freebird rule. Making yeah. an impact. So, uh, uh, the Freebird rule, for those who may not know, is a, a team of three. Yeah. Um, any two of those three can be involved in a match, defend the titles, so on and so forth. Yeah. Right now, it's only used with the with the New Day. Yeah. They use Freebird rules. Um, um, but you know they were a pretty huge tag team. Sorry, faction. Faction. Um, in Texas and throughout the South. So we're talking about, of course, Michael P.S. Hayes, what Buddy is P- Roberts. What does P.S. stand for? I have no idea. Buddy Roberts and Terry Gordy, the original version yeah. of the Freebirds, not the one with Michael Hayes well, and hold Jimmy on. Garvin, because that was just a tag team. The, well, here's the thing. Also, one of our criteria should be legacy less impact and the free birds no no no, part no. Of legacy but like how legacy long is part of did their legacy extend okay. impact is stuff like do you have merchandise and hot topic no we'll no get to impact, that in impact is the impact of your legacy no you just made that up no that's spot. part of impact the free birds were much more than just the core three there were free birds they had like free birds 2000 i think in tna it was like uh, Lacey. No, those are the Von Erics. Never mind. It was the Von Erics. It was like the Von Erics 2000. I was going to get to the Von Erics. So the uh, Freebirds were a pretty popular face tag team and they, yeah. until they turned heel on the Von Erics and uh, kicked off uh, one of the uh, top rivalries of the early Purely 1980s. sexy. P.S. Spit on me. Michael, purely sexy Hayes. That's debatable. <laughs> You don't agree with that assessment? I've I don't seen this know, dance moves. I don't know, man. I think he was all sex. 6'4", 255. Wow, he's 6'4"? <laughs> he's more than 255 if he's 6'4". Um, anyways, continue. I'm sorry. No, that's pretty much it. I mean, they, they have a rule named after him. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're, they were immensely popular in Texas and in the South mm-hmm. throughout the late 70s and early 80s. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, they were involved in one of the most uh, intense rivalries of the 80s between themselves and the Von Erichs. Oh, here we go. Offshoots. This is what I was looking for. There was the Blackbirds, formed in 1988 in World Class Championship Wrestling by Iceman Parsons. He had just teamed with Terry Gordy and Buddy Roberts. Oh, okay. So they feuded with Michael Hayes, apparently after they broke up. But in his place was Iceman Parsons. Um. Oh no, no. He teamed up with Perry Action Jackson and Harold T. Harris to form the Blackbirds. Whatever. And then there was the Extreme Freebirds in NWA Wildside by the son of Terry Gordy, Ray Gordy. He teamed up with Tank and Iceberg to form the Extreme. Those are some names. <laughs> oh man, that's great. 
Oh, this is great. The original three Freebirds briefly appeared in a match against Greg Gagne, the Tonga Kid, and Jim Brunzel during the opening sequence of the 1986 fantasy film oh, wow. Highlander. That's cool. Oh, I gotta, that's impact right there. Yeah, that's definitely impact. But you got to mention Jimmy Garvin as well. Oh, I know. I he know. was friend of Freebirds back in the day. And then when Michael Hayes and him jumped to WCW, they became, you know, there was the Freebirds then. And then I think they called themselves Bad Street after that. So, you know, there you go. Number eight. Eight. The Dangerous Alliance. Now, if you take time out of the equation, then the Dangerous Alliance might have had the most stacked talent oh, yeah. out of any of these groups. If you take everybody in the Dangerous Alliance into their prime, like just put them in their prime. Oh, yeah. You have Stone Cold Steve Austin. You have... Manager, leader, Paulie Dangerously, Paul Heyman, first of all. You have Arn Anderson, Bobby the Enforcer, Eaton, yeah. Larry Zabisco. Well, you had the Enforcers. Yes. Because it was Arn and Larry. Rick Rude. Yeah. Steve Austin. Yeah. Um, if you move on to the ECW version, um, you, you can include Shane Douglas. Oh, man. Sabu, there Taz. Go. Yeah, there you go. Um, they had the booty version later on with C.W. Anderson. Louie Dangerously. That was Sign Guy Dudley. Johnny Swinger, Simon Diamond, and somebody named Billy Wiles. Who even was that guy? I don't know who that is. He looks like a, <laughs> he looks like a backyard wrestler. <laughs> At one point, he went by the name Belvis Wesley. <laughs> that is a kayfabe corner name. Hey, Belvis. That's great. I'm sure he's a great human being. Is he still alive? Also, oh, good. He's still alive. Medusa. Right Oh, yeah, and Medusa, like the top woman of all time. I mean, you know, in 911, the Dark Who is the Dark Patriot? Doug Gilbert. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, did you already mention Rick Rude? Yeah. Bobby Eaton? Yeah. There you go. Steve Austin? What more do I have to say? Adrian Adonis was in, in the AWA version. Yeah. Look at that. Pfft. Dangerous Alliance. They didn't have as much of an impact necessarily as like I think a lot of these groups. I think it's one of those groups though. You look back on now, twenty plus years later, and you think to yourself, "Wow, that's that." On the talent level, it's, it's like, really impressive. It's bizarrely stacked, and it's a shame that WCW at that time. I mean, Rick Rude had a lot of success. Oh yeah, um, but you know, granted, Stone Cold seen or sorry, Steve Austin seemed to be constantly holding a belt in WCW, but he, it never seemed like he would move beyond the mid card even though he was putting on some great matches yeah and uh you know paul Heyman, paul Heyman, he was still doing interesting mic work back mm -hmm. then yeah great name too the dangerous alliance oh it's fantastic oh man michael hayes is in the group too as manager that's cool see like michael hayes is everywhere man oh yeah number seven seven boiling club da, da. <laughs> oh man okay so bullet club talk about impact let's talk about how you can get them you can get their swag in a hot topic these days that's impact all right i thought for sure the bullet club was dead and gone because for a while there they seem to be on the wane after aj left it felt like kenny omega and the Young Bucks were simply interested in selling their own elite merchandise yeah it definitely seemed like um after or between Omega Okada one at yeah, Wrestle Kingdom yeah, yeah, yeah. and Omega's return, yeah. it really seemed like the Bullet Club they was were, going nowhere. Yeah, our Cody Rose debuted at Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, and he, it, he didn't have nobody from Bullet Club came out with him. He for had his the match. smallest Bullet Club logos on his <laughs> boots. They gave him like little stickers. He didn't seem terribly uh, into the idea of being in Bullet Club. But anyways, once Omega returned. From it his was, hiatus, it was it a couple as, things. It gave Bullet Club a kick in the pants. Well, it was Omega returning, but also Adam Cole leaving because that opened up that space for Cody Rhodes to come in, and they started that storyline where Cody Rhodes and him were sort of vying for role of top Bullet Club. Yeah, and in that span, uh, New Japan started their expansion into the states, mm -hmm. struck a deal with Hot Topic to start mm -hmm. selling Bullet Club Young Bucks merchandise in their stores. According to the Young Buck, they tweeted out, I think today, today is Wednesday, we're filming this um, before it airs, obviously. Um, the Young Bucks tweeted out they just signed their deal for Funko uh, figures. Oh. So up there, over there, we're going to have some on our on our daily set, on my version of the daily set, 
We're going to have some Young Bucks. Awesome. Bullet Club Funko That's figures. That's fantastic. Very excited. Chorus about that. Bullet Club founded by Prince Devitt. Finn Balor. Carl Anderson. Carl. Carl Anderson. And I think Bad Luck Fale was one of the mm-hmm. uh, original members, too. Yeah, I think so. Um, and since then, granted, they've. I know they're kind of supposed to be a homage slash parody of the NWO, and mm-hmm. at times they've had the same problem as the NWO in terms of bloat. Yeah. In terms of having. I mean, uh, Captain New Japan was a member at one mm-hmm. point. You could redub them Bone Soldier. Mm-hmm. It's still not a quality addition. <laughs> no. Um, nonetheless, the impact they have made. Can't be denied. They've been fairly decorated as well. Prince Devitt won all sorts of belts. Carl Anderson and, and Doc Gallows won the uh, heavyweight tag team title several times. Um, AJ was IWGP heavyweight champion, while leader of Bullet Club, and now Kenny Omega mm-hmm. is the U.S. champ as leader of Bullet Club. Yeah. And here's the thing. They've made some very good moves over the past couple of months especially, and one which cannot be understated is uh, – is, on the young bucks themselves, the being the elite yes. video. So, so you take a guy like Hangman Page, who is kind of you know a Virgil esque thug, or who could have been relegated to a Virgil esque thug in the group, and because of being featured in the being the elite videos, now his profile has risen. You know the where's Hangman uh, uh, storyline. And so now they're just elevating their own members. Marty Skrulls all over those things. He was a talented addition, or he was a great addition. Yeah. At first we were like, you know, does he really fit? But he seems to be all in on it. And it's really made the Bullet Club into just this really cool thing that everybody wants to be a part of. So you go to WWE wrestling shows, and it's just everywhere you see Bullet Club and it's Young a Bucks sea merch. of Bullet Club Young Bucks merch. Yeah. Now I'm just waiting for Chase Owens to get his time to shine in being the elite. He'll be on being the elite. That's going to happen. So, yeah, he definitely needs that time in front of the spotlight. But then you also have, like, separate from that, you got guys like the Gorillas of Destiny part of Bullet Club, and they, they, they manage to scratch out their own little niche within Bullet Club as well. Tama Tonga sort of mini-feuding with Kenny Omega yeah. a little bit, again, over top dog status yep. in Bullet Club. So um, you got a lot of really cool little things going on within Bullet Club. Impact these days in modern wrestling uh, cannot be understated. No, cannot at all. If if New Japan does have a successful or continue to have success on a bigger scale in the U.S., it's going to be largely on the back of Bullet Club is the Carl Anderson. Number six. Six. The Shield. Sierra, Hotel, Indigo, Echo, Lima. Lima? Lima? Lima, I think. Lima? Delta. Delta. The Shield. The Shield. So they just good got job. back together. You like that? Yeah, that's good. When you started, I was hoping you'd make it through it, but I'm expecting you not to. Not because I don't have faith in you, because yeah. I've never heard you say it before. Yeah. <laughs> I just got stuck on the Lima? Lima? Yeah, I think it's Lima. The Shield. They just got back together. And the magic of the shield was evident immediately. Immediately, when Roman Reigns, the most hated man on the planet, um, immediately got turned around, uh, the crowd reaction to his music was 180 because it's the it's, it's well, I mean, shield music. It's, it's a shield, shield music. music. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say it's the shield's music. And everybody knowing that you know the shield getting back together, they're all anxious for that. Something about those three guys together. You know, it's like the freaking Beatles, man. Yeah, I know. You see them all together and you start to get goosebumps. Yeah. Of course, now two of the Beatles are dead. So now it's just if you see Paul and Ringo hanging out together. The Ringo caught a lot of flack because he was all like pro-Brexit. It's like, oh, really? It's like easy for you to say, dude, because he's rich. Oh, I know, yeah. <laughs> so like if you're super duper rich. Well, he was saying, you know, it's, it's, and he, it's always like the most simplified stuff with these pop guys. It's like, yeah, you know, you're betting on your own country, man. It's always best to be, you know, doing your own thing. And it's like, you're not even talking about it. doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There's no minutia there. Let's get back to the shield. All right. Uh, I think Dean Ambrose is still the longest reigning U.S. champ ever, or one of them. Uh, But he held the belt for a long time and and never defended it. he defended it all of like three times. I know. Um, While he was U.S. champ, Seth and Roman Reigns were tag champs for a good stretch during the shield's initial run. After their breakup, all of them Mm -hmm. has won the WWE title. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, Ambrose has won the Intercontinental title. Mm-hmm. Seth has also been a U.S. title holder, U.S. Mm-hmm. title. <laughs> um, I mean, they were only around really two years, mm-hmm. and the impact they made was enormous. Huge. Huge. Uh, 
and uh, which is evidenced by the by the fact that they're using Dean and Seth to help get Roman over. So when he beats Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 34, the crowd won't boo. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And and you know what? A lot of people criticize the WWE. Routine. That's a very smart move. That is a super duper smart move. And uh, the people all love it. They're probably selling those terrible merch shirts. Yeah, that, that's the one thing. Maybe the shield could have been higher, but all their merch they've ever released has been bad. The one with the three dogs on it wasn't terrible. Let's see here. One, two, three, four. There's only really four groups here who have like really iconic merchandise. NWO, DX, New Day, and Bullet Club? Yeah. Number five. Five. The New Day. So when they first started, um, we didn't really know what to think. They remember, remember when they had like the weird like on the house show circuit? Yeah, we heard reports that they had uh, put together Xavier Woods, Kofi Kingston, and Big E. Like Xavier was going and, and like sort of recruiting Big E and Kofi. I'm sorry. Yeah, Big E and Kofi. And then it was like, well, are they ever going to pull the trigger on this? And then it was like a little while where he didn't hear anything. And then they started running those promos. And it's like, okay, this is going to be interesting. And at first, everybody was completely crapping on them. But then before not too long, you started to see what they were doing with this. Like, I, re- I remember distinctly one time Big E saying something along the lines of, we don't have anything else to hold on to. So if we don't have the power of positivity, what are we going to have? Something like that. And it was like, that's oddly ominous. Like if they start losing or something. And sure enough, they started becoming a heel faction. And they started becoming kind of a, a goofy but really effective heel faction. Yeah. And, of course, their chemistry, their comedic chops, their charisma, all just was way too infectious. And they had the the most potent way of becoming, the most effective way of becoming a face is if you're an amazing heel first. Yes. That's what it is. Yes. Um, they are the longest reigning tag champs in WWE history, well over 400 days. They are currently four-time tag team champions. Um and they are fantastic. The rumors are right now that Vince wants to establish them as the top tag team in WWE history. Exactly. So that's going to mean not just having the longest reign, but the most reigns. The most reigns, which right now is uh, the Dudley Dudleys Boys with nine, I think. With nine. And so, uh, yeah, we're going to see uh, if he's able to pull that off. I think I think it's they're they're already up there. I yeah. think it's already. Oh yeah, I think it's so already too. a thing. I think so too. Um, you know, as evidence, especially their just even their last match, Hell in a Cell against the Usos, one of the best tag team matches I've seen. Yeah, you know, even taking Hell in a Cell yeah. out of it, it was fantastic. And I think if if uh, WWE really wants to uh, separate the New Day from any other tag team in the history of the WWE, is let the three of them defend a singles title. That'd be great. I think that'd be so unique, yeah. so interesting, and we'd get a whole new dynamic. Uh, of the interplay between the three of them mm-hmm. defending a singles title. Yeah. It would be so cool, so different, so interesting. Put the U.S. title on the new day. I, I think that's a I great idea. I think that would be fantastic. Fantastic. Number four. Four. Degeneration X. Suck it. <laughs> oh, I dropped my phone. God damn. <laughs> I was doing my X-Pac. I was very excited. Cross chop. That was great. Uh, yeah, DX, they sort of ushered in, in a way, the Attitude Era. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there was parallel. Well, the original, with, the original iteration. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, sort of, it, it, it was, it was they, were, they existed kind of to combat, if you will, the NWO phenomenon over yeah. there. You know, uh, uh, well, McMahon the, the started. Cl- he had the click members, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, kind of going uh, head-to-head with click members Scott Hall and Kevin Nash over on WCW. Exactly. And so they figured, you know what? Uh, now, you know, now we're going to have more contemporary characters. Gone are the cartoon characters of the past. And that just meant that, you know, they were going to make references to dicks and stuff like that. And then like that. Shawn Michaels would show his butt. Yeah, he would show his butt. He'd wear like, didn't he wear like really, really skimpy, like, I don't know, like a thong or something at one point? His dickhead was just like, it was very evident. Like you could just see... Every like detail of it through like the thinnest cloth. Yeah, it was like on USA Network. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, they popularized the phrase "suck it." They were branded amazingly with that black and green sort of yeah. palette that they had. And their Titantron still one of the best ever. Yeah, yeah, and and ever since you know, so Shawn Michaels he sort of retired uh, at WrestleMania 14. 
Triple H then recruited X Pac. X Pac! And the New Age Outlaws. Oh, you didn't know? Uh, and uh, and then eventually he just sort of ditched them all. But ever since then, and then especially after Shawn Michaels came back like four years later, people were chomping at the bit for more DX, more DX. And so eventually they did reunite. But nothing would ever beat like the original. No, no, it was, it was, it was, it was after uh, Shawn Michaels had been born again. So he yeah, didn't want to do anything really do super so. edgy. Yeah. And he, by the, he didn't crotch chop, did he? He did like he did a high crotch. Oh, okay. Um, and so at that point, it was like you know what? It's just it, it was a nostalgia act. It was a nostalgia act already, but you know that original run where they were just being super inappropriate. Because also, you know, it's like who really wants to see a couple of guys in their late thirties doing that kind of stuff? You know, early forties. Yeah. So, um, but they were as cool as anything in the WWE. You had. The rise of them, then of course, you know they did their own. They had their own battles with Vince McMahon, yep. which was kind of a precursor to his or a parallel running to his problems with Stone Cold Steve Austin. They brought uh, China, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, into wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it was pretty cool when Rick Rude was uh, their manager mm-hmm. for yeah, a spell. It was weird, yeah, until the Montreal Screwjob when he left, he took off. And then he showed up on both shows in the same night. Yeah. Again, wrestling's weird. Yeah. So you know, again, you're dealing with people with immense charisma. With great chemistry, real life backstage friends, uh, and it was it's hard for that not to be so infectious. Mm-hmm. And then plus, coupled with their great theme songs, the great branding, uh, DX shirts, I think to this day probably still sell really, really yeah, well. Yeah, and they were incredibly successful. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Sean was both European champion and a uh, world champ. Yeah. While member of DX. Mm-hmm. Triple H eventually won the European Championship, I mm-hmm. think, during the first run. Yeah. And then he went on to win the, uh, sorry, the uh, Intercontinental title mm-hmm. while he was leader of DX. I think he eventually won the world belt after he ditched them, though, right? I think he did, yeah. yeah. He had to ditch them first. Yeah. But like New Age Outlaws were tag champs all the time. X-Pac probably won a couple belts, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and of course, Triple H went on to become, like, you know... The future leader of WWE. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the literal god of wrestling. Number three, three, the Heenan family. So I, I, I when I'm, we were talking about this beforehand, I said to you, I want to put the Heenan family on here, especially yeah. this high, because after Hogan was done feuding with Piper, sure. uh, leaning up to and directly following a little bit WrestleMania one, Bobby Heenan was essentially top heel in all of WWE. Sure. So for a good two or three year span, Heenan's mission in life was to get the belt off Hogan. And so he was recruiting people and bringing them in to take that belt off Hogan. So he had feuds against Bundy, um, Big John Studd, um, and eventually Andre the Giant. Yeah. Um, which led to uh, one of the, the most massive main events in wrestling history. Main event at WrestleMania three: Hogan versus Andre. Mm-hmm. Um, but even after all that, Heenan family is like a who's who of wrestling Hall of Famers. Look at the roster. You have, you have Andre, you have Stud, you have Bundy. Mm-hmm. Um, in the early 90s, you had Ric Flair, you had Mr. Perfect, you had Rick Rude. You had Paul Orndoff. Yep. Ric Flair, Red Rooster. That's Terry Taylor. Ken Pitera. How he wasn't a massive star is still beyond me. The Islanders, Haku and Tama. I have no idea. I don't know. It's it's absolutely bizarre. The I Brain guess. Busters, Arn and Tully. Yeah, wasn't that like when they were like there very quickly? Yeah, Didn't they go really, there and then come back really quickly. Pretty much. Oh, yeah. Harley Race Harley, was a member of yeah. the Heenan family yeah. in the mid '80s, '86, I think, when he won King of the Ring. Even going back to the AWA, yeah. where the Heenan family started. Look at the roster there: yeah. Black Jack Mull- Mulligan, Black Jack Alonza, uh, Nick Bobby Bockwinkle, Duncan. Nick Bockwinkle, Stan Hansen, Ray yeah. Stevens, Super Destroyer Mark II. Was that a robot? Oh, Sergeant Slaughter. It sounds like it could be a robot. <laughs> that sounds like a robot. No, that's a fair point, Steve. Super Destroyer Mark II. So, <laughs> granted, there's been various iterations of the Heenan family, mm. but as a whole, their their run, nearly decade long run, as pretty much the top heel faction in WWF, mm-hmm. is really impressive. Yeah, absolutely. It was during the, it was during the time when WWF was really got put on the map in terms of mainstream popularity crossover. Hogan, uh, rock and wrestling, all that crap. Heenan family was number one heel. Yep. Um, so yeah, absolutely in terms of impact for sure. And Bobby Heenan was oh, he's the best. The best. He's the, best. the absolute best. Absolute best. Number two. Two N W O. New, 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 new world order. They had their own pay per view. Sold out. They had a and they miss- crafted a giant toilet throne <laughs> for the winner of the Miss N W O pageant. So you can really—that's actually kind that's of, the reason for them 
to be much lower on this list. You can kind of sold out. Let me ask you something. Do you think there would have been an attitude era without the NWO? Probably not. Probably not. They brought a, a, a sense of authenticity and realism that wasn't. That didn't exist in wrestling at well, the time. Well, they brought they brought a sense of cool. Yeah, that's what they brought. That also, yeah. So there was the authenticity, realism. Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, they were both kind of like, well, you know what? They're not going to let us use our WWF personas, and that's good because it, it allowed them to drop the, the more cartoony aspects of those mm-hmm. characters and just come off as themselves. And it allowed people to think, wait a second, is this an actual invasion? Is mm-hmm. this really happening? Um, and then you bring Hogan to it, and it's like, okay, well, no, I can't be because Hogan's being like super cartoonish heel guy. But it did. It made everything cool. Like that iconic T-shirt was the coolest thing. It really and was. That started like jacking up the ratings for WCW, which then led Vince to think, "Man, I need to really get edgier here and yep. cooler." And so we're gonna let things happen, like the DX stuff, like the Austin stuff, like yep. the McMahon character. We're getting rid of Bret Hart in exchange for Mr. McMahon, the evil heel. Yeah. And so the NWO ushered all that. That was the starting point. That ushered all that stuff in. And if you, you know, when you think of WCW and their most popular biggest times, you think the NWO. Yep. I mean, that's, you know, and that gave the WWF their biggest run for their money. Um, And, you know, to this day, to this day, what was it like a couple months ago? It was like one of those idiot Kardashians. Went out oh, you got a Wolfpack shirt. Wearing yeah. the Wolfpack shirt. It's still cool. It like is. the design is still really cool. It really is. So, um, so yeah. In terms of like everything across the board, their impact. What the kayfabe, of course. Hogan, you know, booked himself to be world champion a lot. The Hall and Nash, the Outsiders, tag team champions a lot. Scott Steiner, champion all over the place. Uh, uh, six X Pac was cruiserweight, cruiserweight champion. champion. Um, and yeah, we mentioned bloat during the the Bullet Club. Oh, entry. they were terrible eventually. Yeah, yeah, for but for a very short time they were cool mm-hmm. when they had what six members, I guess. Yeah, when it was the Outsiders, Hogan, the Giant, X Pac, DiBiase. Well, look, I mean, they, they were, were still cool then. They were cool, and then they were not kind of cool. But then they were cool again when, when they the shed up. Well, the Wolfpack, the Wolfpack was, cool. was cool. They were and then cool. They did the finger poke of doom and got back together, and that was definitely not. It was cool. definitely not cool. And it was not cool for a long while after that. It was never. It was never cool again. And they tried to bring him back in WWF, and it was not cool. That then. was definitely not cool. The fans were so into that not being cool that they turned Hogan face. Yeah. And then and then it was like, remember when we were watching the going in raw, the the the, the raw view. Where it was Shawn Michaels, Big Show, Nash, and X Pac, and it was like, what? That is the least. And the funny thing is, like those and Nash, those names should have been cool together, yeah. but it was not. cool. I think everybody realized that what they were doing wasn't cool. Like you can't tuck your shirt in. No, that's not cool. It's not cool. Yeah, but NWO Impact Legacy, enormous kayfabe, all that they had it all. All uh, you know, had it more. Number one. One. The Four Horsemen. Yep. Best faction of all time. Easily. They battled RoboCop. They did. In fact, Sting brought in RoboCop in an effort Mm -hmm. to outmuscle Sid. To counter the the power of Sid. The power, the strength of Sid. The Four Horsemen began in November of 85. Oh, wow. Ric Flair, Ole and Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard. Mm Mm-hmm. J.J. Dillon as their manager. Oh, man. And then for more than a decade, they ran roughshod over WCW, except for that time when Ric Flair was kind of fired briefly by Eric Bischoff, and he yeah, came yeah. back into that promo. Fire me. You can't fire me. <laughs> fire me. You already fired and me. Then even, and he reformed the Horseman. Granted, Steve McMichael was a member of the group then. Well, that's yeah. not cool. But anyways. And even after that, like they just kind of got buried. It's funny. I was listening to, I think it was Dave Meltzer talking to Chris Jericho about Benoit. I mm-hmm. think they were talking about his career and he was saying, I think Meltzer was saying it's still absolutely bizarre that Eric Bischoff was so in love with the NWO that when they, when they would go into horseman territory, they would bury the crap out of them and just leave. People would just leave like pissed, not, not like, Oh, a great heel heat pissed. Yeah. Like it was, he just wanted to, instead of like maybe trying to build them back up with guys like Benoit, Malenko, stuff like that. Instead of doing that, he just wanted the the NWO to just bury everything. No semblance of like, you know, actual storytelling ability. Yeah. Just, Hey, these guys are popular. Let's just keep on burying everything that could possibly pose a threat. So nothing ever. That's terrible. Um, But like you said, for a decade, Mm -hmm. they run roughshod. People wanted to be the four horsemen. 
Like they and they live that life mm-hmm. of extravagance, of excess, um, to the T. Like yep. in real life, the Four Horsemen were the original huge faction. Yes, yes, they were the best. Impact, kayfabe, being good, legacy. I mean, they have arguably the greatest in-ring performer in the history of the in the industry in Ric Flair. Flair. Yeah. Uh, Perhaps the greatest tag team specialist in the history of wrestling, Arne Arne Anderson, Anderson, the enforcer. The enforcer. Ole Anderson was in for a bit. Tully Blanchard, another great tag team wrestler. And then for a while, yeah, you had people like Sid, like Paul Roma. Hold on a second, though. Like Steve McMichael and the Horseman. You haven't mentioned yet. Lex. Oh, I know. I I feel like I feel like he's on the next level up from those guys. Uh, Well, yeah, no, I think he's the next level up. It's like Flair Luger, not quite. Then everybody else. They were inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, too. Mm-hmm. So that's good, too. Good for them. Anyways, what a great episode of Countout. Fantastic. We- Informative and entertaining. <laughs> See, we, 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 we were good. <laughs> we were good. Hopefully, this will provide some impact this in terms of... This definitely has impact. And then Because it goes on YouTube. You can watch it forever. Yeah, and then Kayfabe. Yeah, and then Kayfabe. It'll get good views. <laughs> Kayfabe. It's definitely. Anyways, uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments. And until next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.